गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम टू सिविल अफेयर्स चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सोशल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी बाय मान इग्नू मानी जीरो जीरो थ्री कंपरेटिव एथनोग्राफी एंड अवर टॉपिक इज थियोटिकल पार्ट ऑफ विच द एथनोग्राफी शिवा एंड हर सिस्टर्स जेंडर कास्ट एंड क्लास इन रूरल साउथ इंडिया इज एन एग्जाम्पल लेट इज बिगिन द टॉपिक दिस एथनोग्राफी कम्स एज एन ऑलमोस्ट डायरेक्ट कॉन्ट्रास्ट टू द फर्स्ट वन इन दैट इट फोकसेज not only on the untouchable caste but also rejects the fact of false consciousness that the ones at the bottom of the ladder accept what is projected about them the parlors both men and women especially the latter have their own own views on caste system and the world and are fully conscious of the fact of oppression The data reported in this work was collected in 1987 and reflects and supports what Bitalis said in the 60s that caste and class were gradually pulling apart. Description of the ethnography intellectual context Karin Kapadia's book based on pain stacking research in Arulur village in Tamil Nadu is focused on women and judgments made from their point of view. The gender perspective enables her to examine the effects of urbanization on the traditional values of the community. The author shows that there is not a single Hindu system of caste beliefs and religious practice. North India is different from South India a point which wa- which was well developed in Louis Dumont's work. Field work field work was carried out in Tamil Nadu using the local language. the author conducted observations and interviews with people analysis of data according to kapadia the reason arulur contained more than 60 indogamous caste and sub caste that spread themselves across various class groups so that members of the same caste could be found in various strata to quote the wealthy chhatris chettiars the wealthy chettiars and telugu brahmins form an upper class where lars and better of muthurajas and kalars from the upper middle class and the poorer muthurajas and better of palars form a lower middle class landless muthurajas palars and christian periyars largely form the indigent lower class kapadia in her work describes the process of adapting high brahmin values which is related more to class than to caste as middle order caste who adopt the brahmanical values as a part of class mobility and not as a claim to be upper caste the major focus of this book is on kinship from the gender perspective agrarian relations have also been dealt with the with towards the end of this book and also within a feminist perspective The author carries on a comparative analysis of kinship relations among the upper caste Tamil and Telugu Brahmins and the lower caste non-Brahmin Tamils. In reference to marriage, Kapadia demonstrates that within the overall preferential marriages of the affinal kind, as described by Dumont for South India, there is caste-wise preference, while among lower caste, the preference is for a girl to marry her MBS. mother's brother's son that is mama that is mama's son mother's brother's son mbs thus strengthening ties on the mother's side for the upper caste of brahmins it was preferred that she marries the fjds father's sister's son thus strengthening the father's side in marriage all informants spoke of marriage in terms of a female ego or who is, who a girl should marry as culturally it was the girl's marriage that was most important however unlike dumont's emphasis on lineality in marriage the lower caste display more of bilateral kinship ties with emphasis on the mother's side even though they are otherwise patrilineal and patriarchal yet the women enjoy higher position than brahmin women because of their contribution to agricultural labor 
and the household economy and therefore the most important kin remains the mb mother's brother unlike the formal description of bitale kapadia enriches her analysis with detailed narratives and case studies so that the people in the field come out alive the conflicts and contestations of the real life over the over that of the normative is brought out clearly for example while brothers are obliged to give gifts to their sisters they are never as willing so as parents women try to perform as many ceremonies of their children as possible while the parents are still alive for the brother cannot be trusted to the same extent thus kinship is seen not merely as a series of right and duties but also of many pulations and strategies in terms of the indigenous world view the difference between kin from mother's side and those from father's side lies in the fact of the blood bond that is stronger with mother than with father as mother cries mother carries as mother carries the baby in her womb and this tie is extended to all relatives connected through her however the brahmins give more importance to the father's role in conceiving and producing the child here we find that there is a caste wise gendering even of the biological fact of childbirth yet the trend towards greater power to men in kin relations was becoming evident as the earlier equality of men and women was being replaced by approximation to upper caste norms where men had far more liberty than women in upper caste kinship the interest of women were sacrificed for that of the men in every sphere as women are always expected to make sacrifice for the sake of the family that coincides remarkably with the interest of the men the negative implications of marriage for non-brahmin women is contained in the indigenous phrase kinship bonds with increasing economic differentiation because of formal education and diversification of occupations the preference for kin marriage is decreasing yet it was one form of marriage in which women had a better position moreover an interesting fact pointed out by kapadia is while the system of inheritance among the brahmin tends to be totally patrilineal with preference given to fathers sisters to claim a girl for marriage among the non brahmins it tends to be bilateral with land and property of which they have little anyway passing in male line and the women side inheriting the women marriage preference for mb or mbs who are a real source as they provide both children and labor to the household in older times among the chettiars and other non brahmins the prevalence was more of bright price than dowry but with men getting education and jobs the tendency to ask for the to ask for and receive dowry is increasing it is also increasing as parents prefer to marry outside of kin to get a boy with formal education and good jobs providing supportive statistical data kapadia also shows that the marriage practices can not today be read off from the kinship terminology as well terminology remains unchanged marriage patterns have transformed considerably this book also focuses on female puberty rights among non brahmins for whom the female body is the site of social reproduction at the time of first menstruation the female body also gets connected to the stars and the planetary configurations making it a bio spiritual event in this world view they differ significantly from the brahmin to whom the phenomena of menstruation is totally polluting and makes women into an inferior species a woman who is menstruating menstruating is subjected to strict pollution norms and after her menopause her menopause a brahmin women may resort to expensive ritual to get rid of 
the sin of menstruation. On the other hand, the non Brahmin treat menstruation as an occasion of celebration, the recognition of the auspiciousness and mystical regenerative power of the young women. The blood also signifies the kinship ties of the women to her progeny and others in light of the differing world view the astrological concept also differ in the lower caste from those of the brahmins kapadi also reports and describe the menstrual horoscope for non brahmin women not otherwise noted by any other anthropologist and she tells that it is this and not the birth horoscope that is consulted at the time of marriage of a girl in terms of gender construction the menstruation has a special significance for it. Is this that make a women? Thus, while a man is a man, automatically a woman has to become one through menstruation. However, all caste, including Brahmin, did construct a menstrual horoscope, but only the non brahmin used it for marriage however class is also a very important criterion for determining how many horoscope or if any are made those who are poor cannot afford to get a horoscope made and rely on simply name matching to arrange a marriage the reading of the reading of horoscopes also follows a very interesting class pattern for most caste, once a son is born, it is his horoscope that becomes more important than that of his father. For the wealthy Chettiyars, it is the eldest son's horoscope that is considered as important, but for the poorer Palars and Muthurajas, the youngest son's horoscope was more important as not having any property. Each son, as he gets married, moves out leaving the parents to live with the youngest son who also then inherits the parental house. Moreover, the non-Brahmins even considered that an elder daughter's horoscope was important for her parents, indicating the importance of women among the lower caste due to their significant economic role. The author also focuses on gender and caste differential in the episodes of possession that plays a key role in non-Brahmin rituals, the major contrast between the attitude towards ritual between Brahmins and non-Brahmins is that while the former stress ritual purity, the latter stress on bhakti, devotion that is bhakti or bhakti, or the purity of heart, the purity of body being important but secondary in terms of gender, men who become possessed take on the female role with respect to the deity. Thus, the women do not have any role in rituals except as observers, as men appropriate both male and female roles in rituals. The class vector operates very closely in the in what Kapadia calls institutionalized possession, in which both deities and possessed are ranked. The higher deities are incarnated in the wealthiest of men and the lower deities are incarnated as less wealthy men. Moreover, a person who is rich alone inherits the ability to be possessed. A uh, Sami Adi, also as the author points out, social status and divine grace appears to go together. A major criticism directed against Brahmins by non-Brahmins is that while the latter undergo all kinds of physical pain and hardship in their worship-like body, piercing or walking on fire, the Brahmins observe only strict and formal rituals. The non-Brahmins felt that the real deity came to them only because of their true devotion, while the Brahmins only pretend to be devout. Even so, when the Brahmins become possessed, though not like the lower caste to perform all kinds of painful rituals, they both take on a female role and may become polluted to be possessed. Thus, some Brahmins shed their inhibition 
and roll on leaves on which food has been eaten so that they attain a state of humility and get possessed for a short time in this sense the lower caste version of possession is possible only through devotion is also supported by the brahmins class also plays a key role in determining sexuality while for the poor lower caste palars whose women have to spend their life in the fields doing hard labor there is nothing as appropriate female behavior such curbs on sexuality or morality as appropriate for upper caste brahmin women are emulated emulated only by the upwardly mobile among lower caste those who are able to withdraw their women from working outside of the home such behavior more than anything else becomes a newly acquired status symbol for men when men move up in hierarchy they expect their women to subscribe to the modesty norms of high caste women and remain more confined than they were in the last part of the book the author has come up with the real economic consequences of class coming up with technological and economic changes the reduced level of ground water coming up with climate change has led to the widespread use of tube wells and pump sets from the 60s since only wealthy farmers could invest in these the small land holders have been slowly losing their land to the wealthy ones and a class polarization has occurred kapadia shows that the majority of palars are becoming proletarianized proletarianized and the landless among them pauperized the benefits of reservation have also not come to the palars because of because the majority of them are too poor to send or retain their children in, in school the parents need the labor power of their children for bare survival of the family there are detailed accounts of land holdings and financial negotiations based on case studies to illustrate the manner in which land holdings were manipulated to benefit the upper classes to the detriment of the poor at any time it was impossible to find out how exactly was the village land distributed in fact all the land legislation acts in their actual implementation benefited the upper rather than the lower classes even the police acts in favor of the rich and upper caste to deny rights to the lower caste poor in spite of land sealing acts most rich people continue to hold on to large tracts of land through benami benami sampatti that is in spite of land sealing acts most rich people continue to hold on to large tracts of land through benami in someone else name transactions benami transaction benami sampatti transaction the maximum benefit in all these reform activities were the upwardly mobile middle caste like the muthurajas who were also able to get the benefit of education and new occupations the fate of the so called untouchable caste who were historically agrastic slaves was always that of being exploited and disposed dispossessed dispossessed the position changed only in the 20th century when at least some require some acquired tenancy rights or even small plots of land the position changed only in the 20th century 20th century when at least some acquired tenancy rights or even small plots of land but most remains landless and constitute a class of poor people with no access to land and only limited and erratic access to wage incomes looking at her data from a gendered perspective kapadia reports that untouchable women not only constitute a large part of labor force they also contribute a far larger share of their income to the household than the men they also carry the double burden of working both outside and inside the house 
the role of female children is crucial for any parlor household as these children work to free their mother from the additional burden of household work and they often help her with the outdoor work also but while women contribute more to the family income the demands of the men are more for the share of the household income a fact that often leads to fight and violence further a parlor man feels the frustration of the class operation and often takes it out by drinking and abusing his wife further even in the general economy when a woman does the same work as a man she receives less money for it simply because she is a woman a fact that is accepted by the women themselves as they are socialized into accepting their own inferior status social and technological changes are also not in favor of the lower classes while small mechanization is likely to displace the labor the corporate mentality being ushered in is breaking down the earlier social obligations of the land of the landlords towards their labor while a small mechanization is likely to displace the labor the corporate mentality being assured in is breaking down the earlier social obligations of the landlords towards their labor while the traditional landlords looked upon the lower caste labor with a paternalistic responsibility and provided fringe benefits like food and loans the modern landowner does not count these as necessary wing viewing the workers as only labor and not as human beings the workers too are falling into a system of competitive labor and struggle against each other to get work conclusion in conclusion one important aspect brought forth by kapadia is that lower caste or classes have their own world view and opinions and are not dictated by those of upper caste or classes even while competing with each other for work and wages the women retain their collective interest and also maintain a degree of control over their own lives the economic contribution of women makes a difference in their kinship relations as well as they are valuable even after marriage to their native households the matrilateral bias of the non brahmin marriage and kinship is directly related to the important role the women play in this class of society how does the ethnography advance our understanding an important contribution made by kapadia is to show how the very same kinship system and marriage rules are interpreted differently by persons of different caste and class groups while there is more patriarchy in the marriage and kinship of the brahmins the lower caste lean towards a matrilineal bias also as the class positions change the gender values and marriage norms change too also as the class position change the gender values the marriage norms change too and the marriage norms change too further kapadia notes that the collective self interest of parlor women does not emanate from the from an ethos of the village society that is collectively held but from their own distinctive socio economic position as untouchable women laborers what exists is a clear awareness among all caste groups of their conflicting interest the ethnography present the feminine perspective of women from lowest stratum of society at the last we will discuss the summary the summary part is the fundamental difference between the two ethnographies is first of all their situation in two different time periods and in two different theoretical perspectives it is the remarkable astuteness of the two ethnographers that show that in spite of these differences there are some aspect of data that indicate that the field situation has been dealt with meticulously the basic agrarian class relations are identical the almost fixed depressed status of the untouchables and 
द इम्प्रूविंग स्टेटस ऑफ द अपवर्दी मोबाइल मिडिल और नॉन ब्राह्मण कास्ट हैज़ बीन डॉक्यूमेंटेड बाई बूथ बट वाइल बिटिलेज वर्क इज टोटली एट द लेवल ऑफ नॉर्मेटिव एब्सट्रैक्शन नॉर्मेटिव एब्सट्रैक्शन द क्रिएशन ऑफ द सोशल स्ट्रक्चर एज डिफाइंड बाई रेडक्लिफ ब्राउन कपाड़िया टिक्स द रीडर इन टू द लाइफ ऑफ द पीपल शी हैज स्टडीड एंड ब्रिंग्स अ लाइफ द इंडिविजुअल मैन एंड वीमेन शी लुक्स इन टू द डेप्स ऑफ इंट्रैक्शन एंड बिहेवियर ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग एंड नॉट मियरली द नॉर्म्स एंड प्रिंसिपल्स ऑल दो दे टू आर वेल डॉक्यूमेंटेड इन हर डिटेल्ड एथनोग्राफी द सेकेंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट डिस्टिंक्शन इज दैट she has taken a gendered approach subscribing to the point of view of many feminist scholars a gendered approach takes into account the subjective position of the scholar the possibility of alternative and sometimes contested points of view and the fact that women inhabit a world that is differently perceived than the masculine one contemporary feminist also recognize the differences between women and the intersection of the other social categories like caste and class with gender kapadia has described both upper and lower caste women especially the untouchable palar women and how gender enters into political and economic domains in betelles analysis the world is presented in monochrome but we understand from this from his introduction that he decided with the brahmins and his analysis indicates that he also put forward his data from an upper caste perspective although he doesn't although he does talk of inequality and marginalization he does not throw any light on how the world looks like from the point of view of the marginal and certainly not from the point of view of women this of course does not mean that what he say does not describe the real situation it does but many things appear to us only from one situation or given subjective position namely that of a brahmin male kapadia's new sensed kapadia's nuanced and detailed understanding of the lower caste women's negotiation of their subordinate position their strategies for survival and even at the level of statistical information the details of their contribution and consumption are illuminative of the reality of social life the recognize she recognizes the that society is not uniform she recognizes that society is not uniform and it is not enough to look at things from an abstracted level thank you very much